So I know you raised this program and I saw it online. Why did you want to do this Bahamian program? So a group of us were looking at ways of educating people about genomics. It, it's so important in the 21st century for health, for if you go shopping and buy vegetables, if you, you, know, if you, if you get sick. Uh, increasingly, the genetic information, genomic information, we need to be informed to, to make decisions for these various things, but there isn't really... It's called genetic, you know, genomic literacy. It, it's, it's understanding these uh, processes a lot better. It's um, training a new generation of people to deal with this huge amount of data um, it's not being scared of DNA. People here think about, you know, genetically modified organisms, you know, frankenfoods, things like this. So we wanted to come up with ways to make the process more transparent, educate people, train students, and um, thinking of various reasons. We looked at the Hong Kong flag and Hong Kong money and just thought, eh, this might be an interesting, um, an interesting uh, subject to look at. And the more we looked at the Hong Kong Bohemia, the more we realized it's got very strange history, very strange backstory, and some interesting scientific questions that could be answered as well. So we decided to pick Hong Kong's emblem to help inspire and train people in Hong Kong. We wanted to make the process just more transparent from beginning to end, show how much it costs, how the process works, um, and the things that you can discover from it as well, just to, you know, so people, people are not scared, they're, they're more informed and, and uh, also trained to, training students to actually potentially work on it in the future, you know, inspiring a new generation of scientists. Um, so science, there isn't that much science journalism and science TV in, in Hong Kong, um, and you know, plant genetics, it sounds quite, I don't know, some people might think it's boring and, 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 and a bit you know, different to what normally gets covered in, in, on Hong Kong news. You know, people are very interested in fashion and politics and, and you know, the stock market and things like this. Science is, is not, not a very big area, but um, promoting this, we managed to get um, uh, plant genetics on the front cover of the South China Morning Post. On the Sunday, the Sunday magazine, we had the Bohin, like the Bohinia DNA on the on the cover. Um, we went to lots of schools. The school kids were asking so many questions. You could, you, it was like um, um, you couldn't stop them. They were like so interested. We managed to get Bohinia onto. Um, we were talking about uh, flowers and genetics on CNN, and um, even it was on BBC BBC Earth. So. Um, you know, it, it, we did manage to get a, a lot of exposure for this, but you know, we keep, we have to keep promoting this. Still talking to more schools and and looking at kind of mm -hmm. school programs, and it's great to to talk about this on Shenzhen TV as well. <laughs> okay. The Hong Kong Bohemia, Bohemia Blakeyana, is the one that uh, is highlighted here as as the Hong Kong Bohemia, um, but it was. Uh, discovered about 130 years ago in Hong Kong on um, Pok Fu Lam near HKU, a French horticulturalist and missionary called Jean-Marie de Lave. He was one of the world's top experts in, in kind of discovering new plants, propagating plants. And um, yeah, he was in Hong Kong for, for a short period of time going for a walk and he discovered this beautiful, this beautiful flower. Um, and it was producing lots of flowers, very bright. Uh, he realized it was, it was special because they knew Bohemia flowers, but this one was producing lots of flowers and it, um, for more than half of the year, it produces flowers. That's because it's a hybrid and the uh, other, other Bohemia species, they only produce flowers for a couple of months of the year and then they put all of their efforts into producing seeds and propagating. And so he realized this one was really beautiful. He took cuttings um, to, so he, he, he knew how to propagate these things. He took some cuttings to the Hong Kong Botanic Gardens and then they just propagated them all from there. And he also took some to, because his mission was in, uh, was in mainland China in, in, uh, in Guangzhou. And so he took some to his mission. And so all of the Bohemia flowers that you see 
all, all of the Hong Kong bahinia flowers that you see are clones. They're the, the original, the same plant that he collected 130 years ago um, that have gone either to the Botanic Gardens or to, um, to Guangzhou. So they're all ancestors of this. And for a century, people didn't know the, the origins, like how this existed, why it, why it existed, why it was infertile. And um, so about 10 years ago, um, uh, scientists at HKU and CUHK started to study the, the origins. And they proposed that these two other species, um, uh, Behinia variegata, and uh, Bohemia purpurea are likely, from studying single genes, um, likely the, the, the two parents that must have crossbred. Um, but these are still only single gene studies, so having the genome will let us know that 100% definitively that like these, we think they're the, the parents, but one of the goals of this project is to, to prove that, figure out who mummy and daddy Bohemia is. So, so yeah. Um, yeah, they're we just together, or they, they don't actually father mother. Just, they just together. So somehow they manage to breed. Like they, they, the, these two Bohemia species, they flower at different times of the year. Although they overlap in January, so in a short period of time, the two, the flowers, flowering season overlaps. So somehow, just by a complete fluke, they one managed to breed and produce infertile seeds. So. Um, yeah, it happened once, though maybe it's happened multiple times. Maybe, you know, studying the genome, we'll be able to see if this was a single event, a multiple event, potentially figure out which one was the mother, which one was the father. Um, this is all, these are all kind of scientific questions we're hoping to, to answer. And studying hybrids is actually um, really challenging and really important because most of, our, most of the crops that we eat are, are hybrids. Um, a wheat. The discovery of wheat 11,000 years ago is one of the most important events in civilized, you know, in kind of human civilization. It was one of the key uh, things that drove, you know, agriculture, you know, becoming agricultural societies. Um, most, you know, most of the crops that we eat are, are, you know, similar strange hybrids, but they're very, they have very difficult genomes to study. Um, so actually developing techniques to study these better and more easily are, are, are very useful for, for food security. If you, can, if you can get good at studying these plant uh, hybrid genomes, cancer research is easy in comparison. So it's, they're very good. it's a very good example to actually train people and improve the way we do genome assembly as well. So we wanted to prove that um, Without government funding, without kind of uh, you know um, big external funders, rich people, that we want to show that the public, with not you know huge amounts of money, can produce a, a basic geno you know a basic kind of genome gene catalog. Show some of the things that you can get from having this genomic information, having this genetic information, answer some interesting scientific questions about the origins of this mysterious flower. Um, maybe look at some of the uh, compounds that people have seen in other behinias that, um, for example, they use it in Indian medicine. Um, there's been work on antibacterial activity of some of the compounds in behinia flowers. Do a you know, small amount of um, early, early work on that. We want to show that this is possible with students and that students in, in Hong Kong can actually make a, you know, create a genome. And, um, and they, yeah, ma master's students here at Chinese University, they've kind of got close to that stage now. So it would be, yeah, it's, it's really nice to see that, that we managed to do this. Talking about the medical uses of uh, Bahamian, yeah. you mentioned Indian people. Yeah. Actually, I saw some reports, they, in some Indian people think that Bahamian can use in medical way. Yeah. Is it actually true? And are we still studying in this kind of area? So one of the uh, things that the uh, team at uh, Chinese University of Hong Kong are doing are looking at the looking at the gene catalog, looking at the genes, and looking at ones potential with potentially medical properties. 
uh, Indian traditional Indian medicine, um, Ayurvedic medicine, they actually use um, bahinia for treating um, diarrhea, sort of a, a few different um, diseases. So we would like to see if if any of the compounds are useful. Um, and there has been um, a lot of research on a, a few compounds in bahinia for um, attacking microbial biofilms. So. Uh, bacteria will grow on surfaces, um, you know, potentially infectious, nasty bacteria. And so um, there's some compounds in Bohemia that uh, people in laboratory studies, not taking it into the field and stuff, but have seen that it helps kill bacteria in these, ba in these biofilms. So people have done it on, their, on some other Bohemia species, but nobody's done it on the, nobody's looked at the version from Hong Kong Bohemia. So this is this potentially interesting work there. So um, I've done some citizen science projects, um, worked on, um, so BGI has worked on various disease outbreaks. Um, they worked on SARS, they worked on um, uh, the, in 2011 there was a terrible outbreak of E. coli food poisoning that killed 50 people. And I, working at BGI then, we um, made all of that data public. We crowdsourced it around the world. Professor Kwan in Hong Kong, researchers in Australia, America, all over Europe, they, they used this data and found out things about the, about the disease outbreak very, like very, very quickly. And so we were trying to think of a similar project to inspire people in, in Hong Kong, not necessarily a life and death thing like uh, like a disease outbreak but at least something relevant to Hong Kong that we could you know get interest here so um, uh, I was one of the two people that originally uh, came up with the idea um, of the of, of the project we helped recruit um, some people here at CUHK we helped convince uh, BGI um, to let us sequence it in their Hong Kong office. Um, we've been doing, um, in, in particular, doing a lot of the outreach and education, going to schools, helping promote it on social media and Facebook and, and things like that. So I, have, I haven't done so much of the, the you know, the, the genomicists here have been doing a lot of like the genome assembly and, and, and analysis. Um, I've done a lot of the flag waving and trying to encourage people and get people involved. So, so um, we wanted to do this project for, for Hong Kong, you know, uh, funded in Hong Kong, sequenced in Hong Kong and uh, uh, assembled and, you know, it's, it's like a made in Hong Kong uh, project. And BGI is obviously in Shenzhen and they're in Hong Kong. Um, they've had a very long history doing stuff with data sharing and open data. Um, and they also have um, one of the they, uh, BGI College is, is a, a part of BGI. There's, uh, they do a lot of stuff in, in education. And so science education, gen, you know, genetic education is, is part of things that BGI have been promoting as well. So it was very easy to convince them. Um, it kind of, uh, you know, promoted a lot of things they wanted to do. Um, so the money that we raised was going to cover the, the chemical costs, the, the, the consumables, and then BGI would offer the labour for, for free, um, pro bono, but, you know, it was, it was an easy sell for them, you know, they've, they've been very happy to see, to see this project do well. Is it the um, funding enough for this program? Is it? Is the funding enough for the program? So, um, that it it managed to fund uh, a lot of the things we wanted to do, but it wasn't enough to to cover everything. So we thought we would do a, a pilot, show what is possible with with this amount of money, get some results, um, and then with that, uh, you know, with a kind of proven track record, with uh, you know, we made this many findings with this amount of money, then we can push for. This was, you know, this was community funded, you know, we were getting, uh, you know, 100 kwai here, 100 kwai there, you know, sm small amounts of money. We wanted the, you know, Hong Kong public to kind of own that. But now, now we have that, now we can go to bigger funders and 
talk to you know Li Kaxing or somebody somebody like that to see if they can give more money to to do a you know a, a better quality um, kind of more final version of the genome. So. So this is another thing about genomics, um, and what, one of the things we wanted to, making the whole process um, transparent is to show that when you, have a, when you have a genome, when somebody releases a genome, it's, not, it's never the final project, it, it never ends. Um, the human genome is the most complete genome, the human genome project was 15 years ago, it's still not finished, and I don't know if it will ever be finished, they keep every year or two they do another improvement, they do another version. So we want to show that a genome is, ne is never a completed thing, the technology is changing so quickly, improving all of the time, you, you know, the new things that we can do with these genomes the whole time. So um, we've made everything open, we're going to continue working on this, but we're, we're all volunteers. People can, other people can take this up and carry this on and, and, and uh, doing an emblem of uh, one place like Hong Kong, um, we're hoping it would inspire other places that have their own emblems to, to do the same, you know, the Japanese sakura or uh, the Macau lotus flower or, or something like this, you know. We, we've produced a kind of open platform, we've made all our training materials open, so if somebody wants to do this again somewhere, somewhere else to teach, teach students, you know, the uh, Indian tiger or something, something like this, they can, they can do this now. During the con 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 conducting progress yeah. of, the, of this project, did you meet any difficulties? So um, we, we made things difficult for ourselves from the very beginning in that um, we chose this species, which is, is a difficult species to study, because it's a hybrid. Um, the Hong Kong bohemia shouldn't exist because it's it's sterile, it's a, a hybrid of two completely different species that somehow managed to breed and create this sterile offspring that people have just been uh, taking cuttings and propagating artificially for 130 years. Um, the difficult thing about hybrids are their genomes are very complicated, very uh, heterogeneous, which means that um, we can't just study one, uh, one genome, we have to study what we think the parents are, and then once we've assembled the parents, then we can assemble the, the, the offspring, which means we don't, we, we're not doing one genome, we're doing three genomes, which makes it three times more expensive. So that was quite a big, that was quite a big challenge that we had to raise a lot more money um, because of that. Um, there was a more interesting scientific question there, but then we have to work three times harder, and we didn't quite raise enough money to do the all three genomes um, but we had enough money we raised about a third of the of the total and so with that we managed to sequence the gene catalog so the the RNA rather than the DNA of all of the of the three the three species that we wanted to look at um, so it's not a, a full complete genome but uh, for that price, we could study all of the, the genes, the, what are probably the most interesting part of the, of the genome, um, and f that will answer most of the interesting scientific questions, you know, medicinal properties, the, the strange origins. Um, and then we hope that once we study that enough, um, we could then apply for funding to do a kind of final or complete genome which would be a lot more expensive. But that, that, was the, that was the main difficulty that we had to overcome, yeah. I see. So the, the difficulty you mentioned, any stories, insight that most touch you or make you feel sad or any different feelings? So um, we've, one of the main goals for this project is science education. It's getting... Uh, communicating these things, trying to get the Hong Kong populace excited about their about their emblem, about and about science, and we did a very good job um, promoting it in English language media. We got on the front page of South China Morning Post, we got in CNN, we got on BBC. Um, we went to the effort to make some of the videos and materials in Cantonese. But the interest in, in the local, you know, Guangdonghua and uh, Cantonese television and media in 
in in Hong Kong was wasn't as wasn't as good. Wasn't, we were a bit disappointed with the response from the from the local media there. Like we're really happy that uh, you know um, uh, Mandarin, uh, you know the mainland media have been have been more interested than a lot of the the Hong Kong media. But going into schools, the school kids are like really interested. People, uh, you know, have done lots of public talks. People are people are really interested. But for some reason, a lot of the local media um, hasn't been. Science is not something they cover much. But we have to just keep keep trying because it it's really important. It affects all of our lives. So. Yes. So uh, the the project is still in progress. It's still going. Yeah. Yes. So what re any result have already applied on planting and bulbing here right now? So it's still quite early, and I think you need to talk to the team at Chinese University who are who are doing the okay. analyzing the data now. But I think they've done quite well in um, uh, characterizing the, the the potential genes that have you know medicinal properties. The early data will help really prove the origins where the where you know Bohemia originally came from. Um, Understanding the you know the the origins um, because it is a, a sterile hybrid. One thing that we hope we might be able to get from this data is to understand why it is infertile. Um, it's quite difficult to to propagate the Hong Kong bohemia because it doesn't produce seeds. So everyone is um, is, is you know gen genetically identical, and you have to uh, take cuttings and make rootstocks, which is quite difficult. But if we can understand um, wh why exactly it, it's infertile, we might be able to actually make it fertile, make seeding bohemia, which would make it then so much more easy to propagate and cultivate. Um, it will also be useful um, if uh, there's ever any um, disease. Because they're all genetically identical, uh, Hong Kong bohemia will be very uh, susceptible to um, to 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 an infection. So at least we ha having all of this information um, will give us a head start if there is ever any kind of um, you know disease outbreak affecting it. So um, it hasn't affected uh, you know the cultivation and propagation yet, but we're better prepared for for the future and if anything goes wrong.